of spring were sung, and music was never so gay. You told me you loved me when we were young one day. You told me you loved me and held me close. I grew up in a very happy home. I was seventh in a family of ten. When I grew up, I, uh, I uh, went to school in Menlo. It was the nuns that was teaching. There was one and two late people that taught there too. I enjoyed it. They were very strict, but uh, very good teachers. When we were young one day... We were only allowed to speak Irish and anything to do in school had to be Irish. In the school in those days, there was an open fire, big open fire, and we used to have to bring a sod of truff in winter time. <laughs> and if there was a stack of truff along the way, you put your hand in and pull one out. <laughs> the one that was hanging was Galway Bay, and the teacher said, or the examiner said, get out of here, we're Irish. I left school when I was about 14 anyway. And I would go to school for my father. <laughs> I would. I, I thought we'd have rain when I left here in the morning. <laughs> and then the sun came shining out on us. God's sun was shining all the evening. My father, he had a lot of sheep. He was a sheep farmer. And we used to be running after the sheep and mining them. And we used to, you know, remember taking the lambs from the oars. And when we had had our harvest from school, there we'd be mining the little lambs. You're too clean. <laughs> to work for a farmer. Any work I'd taken for five shillings a week, work from dawn to dark. My grandmother was the nearest, she lived the nearest. And I spent most of the time with my grandmother because she had, the girls were married and she had no one to do any little bit. So I used to bake bread for her. <laughs> my grandfather had his mushta coming down each side. And he was smart. They used to go to the fair and cross them. I said twice a year. With the cattle. He always liked his pint. And my grandmother used to follow him. And she'd take the money. <laughs> and then I had to wait until they said the cattle. To pay Joe Kay. In fact, I'd eaten the whole year round. I never went to any place. I didn't work except for my, at home on the land. And it used to be nice the day the shearing had come, or the day the dipping. We'd always have to give a hand. I was to six German prisoners of war. That was my job in England to start off with. They were very, very good. They used to teach me, I used to teach them English, the English that I had, and the Germans used to speak German to us. I had the good intention, and I think still regret it that I didn't go nursing. That's what I wanted to do. But the war started, and of course I wouldn't be left to England, and you did what you were told in them days. I stayed put, and I went to work. In the shop. I worked every house that had a title and I finished up at the palace. I used to go up on Saturday to the convent and uh, I used to do little jobs for her in sewing and uh, then she taught me um, typing. After the war uh, there was no boats coming in much to Galway 
and there was a big um, rowing boat, we used to call it the cruiser, and we'd sit in it, let go of the rope, and we were inside the docks, we couldn't go any further, the gates were closed, and we'd float out into the middle of the docks. Sometimes I'd have my library book and I'd be reading it, and my mother would call me, your dinner is ready. in different houses each Sunday and my mother that when we gathered in our house my mother would go off to visit and she'd leave us there I learned me drink your father <laughs> the ring your father and the forehand reel and they turned reel the waves of Tory and the walls of Limerick and we had a ball and we weren't allowed to talk at work boys and girls Men were on their own, the females were on their own. Of course, there was plenty of pubs, so there was just a, a pub or two in every street. But no women, now, if the women wanted anything, it was into the snugs, those small little cubicles, and that sit in there. Especially after coming from the market now, they'd win and have a pint and they'd get a bun and griffins. I was going out with the Jewish girl for a while. She was very, very nice, very attractive, and she asked me to go to her home and meet her parents. The greeting I got was, are you Irish? We'd gather at the crossroads and we'd all cycle to the Glen. And the Glen was just a road and a little river, stream running by, sit on the bridge and look at the world go by. There was many match me there. The gardener brought up this man <laughs> and he was a nice man, he was very creative he said. So that's how I met my husband, 18. I met my husband at 18 and we got married at 20. I went back to London and I went to one of the big dances and I met my wife Dorothy God rest her. I was a man until I married. And then when I married, I moved over to Connemona. About three miles of the difference, that was all. There was 28 years of happy, lucky. Now the years have caught up. And I'm on my own. And I go two days a week to St. Francis' home, Wednesdays and Fridays. And I love it. somewhere to get out and not to be looking at the four walls of the house at home. Old age will come to each and every one of us. It's an area of our life we have to put a lot of effort into and preparation. And while old age is not an illness, it certainly needs a lot of preparation as you get old to be, I suppose, to manage your health and to prolong your life for as long as possible. That would be the aim or the goal of each individual. You know, you can be old at 60 and young at 90. Since the time I took over the service, there was one thing that I made sure of, that this would be an open door and that people could come and go when they wanted, freedom of choice, get up when they liked, go to bed when they liked, felt at home. Our staffing levels have increased enormously since I started here. Uh, we have now many senior staff nurses working alongside us, many of them with a higher diploma in gerontology. A lot of them have degrees in nursing. They fit in very well with the philosophy of care of the elderly. We have our daycare facilities which we run seven days a week now. A tremendous success. We cater for, I suppose, a radius of seven to ten miles around the city. And uh, 
they come and they enjoy and they talk and they meet. And Usually in the morning we do exercise. It helps the muscles and makes them more agile. It makes their hands more flexible to help walking. And now I want everyone to put their hands on the shoulder. And now out in front. Or and out. back to our shoulders. shoulders. Front and back and wave down. Up and down. Up and down. Move all your fingers. Move your knees and feet up and down. I'm now 84, not 84. So I take life easy. I enjoy coming in here, they're lovely. All of the muscles. So close your eyes very tight. I'm here to you. Show me. Stop peeking at me. I come in here two days a week and I didn't know anything about it. I walked in one day, somebody told me. And here I walked in, I was a board, I thought I should be taken in. Thank God, they said, you know, it, that was about four, five or six years ago, I suppose. Yeah, 39. Yeah, legs are like eleven. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. 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 Okay, bingo. Yeah. A quiz, flower arrangements. It may be art and crafts. Um, it's whatever whatever the residents feel like doing on the day. It might simply be music. I suppose in a way we're moving from the medical model of care to the social model of care, you know, and not uh, seeing uh, illnesses now as acute, but more that we intervene rapidly. We have to have a job satisfaction survey as well, you know, requesting what they would like themselves in the line of food, you know, in the line of, uh, you know, if staff are treating them okay, if there's any difficulties, if they have any complaints, how they might go about making a complaint. Because it is always about the residents, really. Our whole life is around the benefits of the residents and how they might gain from, from our work and what we're about and, you know, understanding what care of the older person really is and what it means. We have a kitchen that recently received the HICWA Award in Excellence, Excellence Ireland, which has been a huge bonus to the unit here. We have uh, just under 40 residents and we have 15 to 20 daycare people every day. And we have our staff as well to feed as well. Wow. Got a lovely meal, lunch and tea, dessert, and a lot. I like it. We also, of course, have a uh, a huge spiritual background in nature to the unit in so far as quite a number of them love mass. Up until very recently we had daily mass but unfortunately as time has moved on the priests are not available as much as they used to be. It's an area of their life that they like to dwell and develop and you know, I suppose closer to the Lord in so many ways, you know. It is a time for reflection for them as well. And then we have um, a lot of outings where people go on tours where they just take off, you know, decide themselves. We never actually tell them where to go. They tell us where they would like to go. Nice and easy, does it? Because at the end of the day, it is community-based, it's for the Galway people, it's their uh, home, 
it's home away from home. We, the staff, only facilitate them and uh, they're entitled to their dignity and respect and their uniqueness and their individuality. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are grey. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. I heard a fisher girl singing and this refrain was her song Red sails in the sunset way out on the sea Oh, carry my loved one home safely to me. He sails at the dawning. All day I've been blue. Red sails in the sunset. I'm trusting in you. Swift wings I must borrow. Make straight for the shore. We marry tomorrow.